Tim Collins with Coleman Today. I'm out with Wade Harbison. Wade, uh, we're going to be talking about Amendment Number 2 coming up on the ballot November 7th, a statewide adjustment proposal yes. to the Constitution. Tell us about your thoughts on it. Well, Amendment 2, really, uh, if, uh, if some of you don't know about it, is basically about uh, state parks funding and where that money goes uh, from the state parks. Currently, uh, the way it's set up is the revenue from the state parks goes back into the uh, general fund, and the legislature basically determines uh, where that money will go. And right now, uh, over the past five years, the state legislature has actually moved about $30 million out of the state parks budget uh, into other parts of the state government. So uh, voting yes on this bill will basically mean that uh, the state parks get to keep the revenue that they are generating at the state parks. So this is a fundamental change, the way I hear you say it, yes. uh, about what happens to the money that the state parks make from admissions and events sure. and so forth. Absolutely, and they're making money, you know, off of uh, camping, lodging, uh, admissions, anything like that, and uh, they're generating about $30 million a year in revenue to go back into the state parks, and uh, last year a lot of people will remember um, some of that money was taken out of that uh, funding and it went towards a, a few other things that they were trying to close up some of the shortfalls in the state and uh, they were talking about potentially having to close uh, five state parks so this would prevent that from happening by basically the parks funding themselves through the revenues that they're creating i follow you now i'm gonna have to play devil's advocate on this what about uh, somebody with some other interest in state government goes hey wait a minute we want that 30 million dollars the parks sure. can't have it uh, they're going to throw a fit, aren't they? They will, and you know it's uh, it's kind of uh, uh, you know a, a devil's advocate. You're right there because some of that money right now is going towards things that do need to be funded, and there's definitely a way to do that. But uh, I think really the the big thing is right now uh, the state parks budget is about 37 million dollars last year, and about seven million dollars of that was actually uh, taxpayers' money. The rest of it, the 30 million dollars, like I said earlier, was basically generated from user fees, rentals, things like that. Um, so you know the seven million dollars could actually uh, go towards another uh, department and basically the state parks could you know, work on creating more revenue to uh, keep themselves afloat. And basically uh, the, the bill that is uh, on the, the ballot actually says up to $50 million would go uh, towards the state parks. And then after that, the legislature could determine whether or not to keep that uh, money in the state parks or allocate it somewhere else after that. Well, as I listen to you explain, it sounds like you're of the mindset that let the parks keep that extra $30 million so they can uh, extend and grow the Parks Department. Absolutely. You know, and this is something uh, I personally support this, and obviously a lot of people know that I work for the uh, City of Coleman Parks and Recreation Department. And uh, after working here for, you know, I've worked here almost 10 years, uh, Tim, and, you know, in our 10 years here, we've done a lot of good things, and uh, we've actually been one of the best Parks and Recreation Departments in the country. You were, uh, you were rated number four not too long ago, weren't We you? were. Uh, from 2010 to 2012, we were actually rated as one of the top four Parks and Recreation Departments in the country by the uh, NRPA, which is the National Recreation and Parks Association. And one of the reasons, Tim, for that is because of our structure. Um, and the structure is very similar to what the state parks are trying to do, because currently uh, we have a lot of fantastic uh, city leaders. We have a lot of uh, really good civic leaders that have believed in parks and recreation uh, for years in this community. And uh, we keep all of the money that we create uh, through the parks department in the parks. And basically that allows us to put all of the money back into, uh, you know, creating new parks and playgrounds, new programs and services we're able to be the best of the best because we have the funding to do that. Um, so, you know, uh, memberships and registration fees, uh, golf court, uh, golf co uh, course, uh, green, um, all that stuff goes back into our operating budget, and we're able to use that to benefit the community. And that's basically what the state parks are looking at doing is, uh, you know, keeping the money that they create to uh, make something better with the state parks. Well, and, and two things on that, as I hear you talk, it, it, it's incentivized you guys working Absolutely. in the park department to make it bigger and better. Sure. And you're not really a burden on taxpayers. That's right. Uh, you know, about 80% of our budget here at Coleman City Parks and Recreation is coming from uh, user fees like the state does. So that's, you know, through, uh, again, memberships and registrations, things along those lines. So, uh, you know, the taxpayers are not really paying a whole lot into our parks and recreation system. And the good thing about that is that the city is able to use that uh, tax funding for other purposes. We've got uh, great street systems. We've got great utilities and things like Duck River going on. And uh, really the state could uh, do the same thing as well and follow the same model. And basically, that's the model that we're talking about voting on right now is allowing the state parks to keep that funding to go right back into their budget and then you know the taxpayer money could go towards other very much so needed services. I follow you. Now there's one word that, that kind of jumped out at me when I read Amendment 2, the word privatization. Yes, a lot of people are worried about that. Yeah, I immediately thought, well, Mary's going to come in and buy 
Sure. You know. Lake Gunnersville uh, State Park, and they're going to put a hotel there and, you know, charge yeah. for it and everything. And people see that. And that's not necessarily what the uh, bill is talking about. What the uh, amendment basically says is that, uh, you know, different services can be privatized. And that includes anything from um, concession services. You know, if a park has a concession stand, uh, they might be able to offer, um, you know, somebody to come in and uh, run that concession stand for them at a lower cost than what they could do it. Uh, you know, it could be a uh, hotel could be coming in and uh, kind of partnering with the state parks and having a hotel on site just different things like that uh, but it's even as simple as currently right now uh, you know you could maintain the parks with an outside service that could come in and mow and we do some of those things uh, actually with the city of Coleman uh, Parks and Recreation and, and we basically just do that to uh, keep our dollar as low as possible and let it stretch as far as possible because a lot of times these outside contractors can do it cheaper than what we can directly do it ourselves. So it's really about privatizing the use of subcontractors sure. not giving away the park. Absolutely you know nobody's going to set up a fence around the state parks and start charging $50 and you know change it into a a private business or anything like that that's definitely not going to happen gotcha this has been very educational and yes. now one last question yes if you can instruct voters on how to vote mm -hmm. in one word what would you have them vote for on november 7th amendment 2 i would say yes definitely is is the word to do it um, there's a lot of uh, huge benefits to, to voting yes on that uh you know the other thing is the economic impact that the parks also have throughout the state and through our community so um you know uh, we really want to support our parks because basically uh, last year they had about a 37 million dollar budget and state parks created about $375 million in economic impact, um, which is a huge number. Basically, about for every $1 we're spending, we're getting about $10 or $12 back in economic impact through jobs and uh, different people going to restaurants, businesses, hotels, things like that. So it's a huge impact, and we just want to protect um, our state parks and allow that funding to stay within the parks so they can grow and be uh, the best state parks, hopefully, uh, just like we've been able to prosper so well here with the city of Coleman. Wade, thanks so much for taking your time to explain this. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Good Wade's voting yes, November yes. 7th on Amendment 2. Yes.